Hey everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Boom Studio Podcast. In today's episode, myself and Alistair talk about brand positioning, a topic that is often overlooked and underestimated. Many people have a misconception of a brand, thinking that it is a simple logo that you throw onto a business card. This is inaccurate and given enough time, a brand can develop to become an invaluable asset that anchors your company, streamlines operations and increases revenue. Keep listening to start learning more about the impact of branding and how you can start positioning your brand today. But uh, to come back to brand positioning, I know that's something that you obviously know a little bit about. Um, A lot of people think a brand is a logo. If I see the Nike logo, that's, that's a brand. Yeah. But maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the specifics, like what exactly is a brand and why should we even think about positioning it? Yeah, so it's interesting how Nike comes to mind as soon as we say, talk about a brand. They've done well. How did they do that? So branding, I think the word itself is an old Norse, Scandinavian or something word. It's brand, it's brand, it's, it's to burn. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, it comes from like the, the concept of cattle branding. So branding something that belongs to you so it's ownership um so in that sense people people obviously you know a logo is that and that's a brand and um so i think branding has to do with attachment and association okay firstly so on that level simply i'm branding a a thing and i think that's where branding products came you know we put the logo on the logo and uh, somehow there's this idea of a brand 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 management, actually managing a brand and marketing management uh, only sort of really emerged in the 1950s as a discipline. Uh, so, so branding, uh, if you think human beings, we, we kind of like tribal, right? So we clans and uh, if you think, I mean, medieval times, if you think, you know, tribal, if you think Africa, the Incas, South America, the markings, the association, the belonging, the sense of belonging. And again, it comes to the idea of attachment. So whether we're attaching a thing to a creator or a maker or an owner, or we're attaching ourselves, uh, we tattoo ourselves or we, you know, if you think about guys in jail, then they form these um, groupings and identify themselves. And I think, I think there's just something in us. And so branding is a lot deeper um, on a psychological and emotional and human level than a logo. Um, And I think the ignorant or naive error most business or lots of business owners or people make is to uh, think about the business as a business, as a transactional thing, there's a balance sheet, you know, we have targets, we have a product, we want to move product. Um, yeah, but so we're going to put a logo on that product, right? And I mean, in, in all truth, that's where Nike was. That's the case of Nike. Uh, Phil Knight was not thinking about the brand as such. He was thinking about the company culture he wanted to instill, and that was something important. But he wasn't thinking in terms of a brand. In fact, um, he was pretty against advertising as a as an exercise in general. He believed the product would sell itself. And he was right in that, but he was right on a deeper level that he was building a brand. And I think what people don't realize is you're building a brand even if you're not. Um, and I mean that because... Brand is the sense of belonging and association, right? So whatever you're putting out, whatever email you're sending, whatever advertising, whatever your product looks like, it's sending a message. You're building a perception. And brand on the deeper level is really perception and belief. 
I believe something about a particular thing, whether it's the creator or the owner or the product. So you get product level branding, you've branded your products and it can remain there. But I think where branding has gone and the likes of Nike and Apple and these big sort of global brands, they transcend product branding. We're not just talking about iPad, we're talking about Apple um, and the entire the all the touch points all the experiential points uh together that form my my perception of that thing and those are managed very consciously very deliberately by these uh, organizations and they build these brands and what does that mean does it mean i'm uh, it's hugely intangible um, I'm building the brand in the mind of the consumer, in the mind of the tribe member who resonates with the values, uh, resonates with the level of quality or the perceived level of quality. And a lot of this stuff's perceived. And I think a lot of these big brands, they, they use third world production facilities um, and then sing a very nice song to the end consumer about all sorts of stuff, you know, um, responsible this and sustainable that and all these things. And there's truth in it and there's making efforts because they don't want to, <clears throat> you know, it, uh, oftentimes you don't want to look like the bad guys. I think there's people genuinely interested in uh, trying to make things better as well. But the perception is huge, right? So brand positioning is such a vital and fundamental and absolutely uh, necessary thing to do if you're, if you're running or starting a business. And what brand positioning is, is you're deciding, working out, not deciding, sorry, working out, working through how you want to be perceived, how you want your business to be perceived. And that's so important because you're building value, you're investing in people's perception of you, which is more valuable than your product, right? Because if I believe your product is of value, I mean, you know, a great singer, a great artist can still be loved. They can release some average stuff, but because they're so good, people really listen and try and get all the meaning out of those average songs. If the same song was released by someone who no one had a good perception of or there was no um, brand around that, uh, they would be lost. So to sit down over the course of a couple sessions with yourself, with your team, and to actually think, right, let's define in words. What is the belief we want to establish in people's mind? What do we want to be perceived as? Um, and this is both actual and aspirational. I, uh, we, we say how we want people to perceive us now, and then we, we strive for that if we're not entirely there. So it helps the, the organization also go forward. It's not a vision, and it's not a mission. Vision is where we want to be as a company, and the, the mission is how we get there. Brand po positioning is what I want people to think and believe about us. <clears throat> There's different ways you could tackle it. But uh, it's a very powerful exercise. It'll help you not trying to be everything for everyone. It'll help you know where to put your energy, what to not, uh, what to not focus on, what to focus on, not to get caught in the trap of just competing with other companies on price. It'll help you differentiate. So define in one sentence, two sentences, why? Uh, why I believe in you. And there's ways you can do it. You can do it from third person, first person. You can write it from your con the consumer's point of view. I believe in X because you need an emotional element. You need a, a value element in there. You need different elements that will help you make up that. Um, you can't just say things like quality because you need to define what kind of quality. Everyone says quality, but what makes it quality? So like, why are we quality? We are quality because we've built this on a handcrafted tradition that goes back to my grandfather. Um, you know, and the brand positioning then uh, sort of springboards or launches the brand story.
that the brand story can then build on that. So um, yeah, brand brand positioning very powerful for any company of any size to undertake and define in words and then be true to that. Sure, there was there was a lot of good stuff there. Um, while you were talking about brand being a perception, I thought of what Seth Godin once wrote, where he said he said that exactly that a brand isn't necessarily a, a trademark or a um, symbol, but it's a perception that you get from from a company or you know institution, good or bad. Whatever that intrinsic feeling that you get when you walk into a store and you can just try and think of a store wherever you are now that you love going to, you know, and you can just think about why you love going to it. What does purchasing from that place make you, how, do, how does it make you feel? And when yeah. you're wearing those products or using those things, how, what sort of status is that putting out, you know, to society? I'm thinking about Apple specifically. You know, there's something about when someone sits down at a coffee shop and they pull out a MacBook and that shiny embossed Apple mirror-like image just, you know, shines your reflection and you just feel that that person is a professional of some sorts. Um, or a spoiled brand. Or a spoiled brat, depending on the perception that you have with with Apple. Um, there's something that you said that I just want to talk on real quick, and that's you said that every size business should look at their brand and 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 look at their brand positioning. And I think that small businesses often completely overlook branding. Can you? touch on that like a little bit more someone who is just starting up a little business maybe they don't even know the concept of a brand how important is it to them really to invest in in branding versus say something like getting more sales you know because that could be the argument should i invest time and energy into building this brand and this emotion mm. and this perception or should i just try and go for the hard the hard skills you know of yeah getting a sale no it's a, it's it's a very good question and i think it's exactly what happens um so if you define the brand at, at any level it's vital for anyone i think um and firstly it's going to help you save time it's going to help you know who you are. It's going to help you know what to target, what to lead. So it can end up saving you a lot of time if you define your brand, especially in the early stages. But don't con we mustn't confuse branding with brand building. Branding means I'm going to go spend time and money putting my logo on stuff and you know all these extensions of the brand. We're talking about something in the mind. And we're talking about something in the business owner's mind to start with. That brand must be entrenched in their own mind. So um, why it's important is because when they hire the first employee or the second or the third, they train them on the brand. If the, the employee understands the brand and understands what it stands for, why it does it, uh, that saves an incredible amount of time. And I've been uh, in a few organizations or involved with them where I've seen the effect of that this brand passed down, this brand uh, given training on and how it guides and how it's a higher authority than, than people's opinions. So it's not about this single business owner who's now disputing, uh, you know, uh, something with an employee or something with a, uh, someone else in the company and it's opinion versus opinion. You have this kind of thing to go to and say, but that doesn't fit our brand. And that that doesn't fit our brand can be so many things. It can be how sales are done. It can be how you dress in terms of the presentation. It can be, so it's not just what a website looks like. It's not just, you know, via, something on a vehicle. It's, it's every single contact point a customer comes in, in, in touch with. Um, so if you, we're not even talking about spending a cent. We're just talking about defining a brand. You, you know, people jump to a logo. I need a logo. I need a logo. 
I mean, I've dealt with people, people come to me, I need a logo. I'm like, you don't need a logo. No one cares about your company. You're a consulting company. You've got your network. Just put your name at the bottom of the email and <laughs> send some invoices. When, when you hire your first person or when you, when you uh, start finding yourself, start going, oh, well, you know, I really want to go into this, then let's define that as a brand. Then from that, a logo can a logo comes from brand positioning. If you're going to go and that's why people it could take them ages to design a logo, and it's just opinion, it's just shooting in the dark. And I like, you know, you'll hear, oh, I'll I'll know when I when I see something I like, I'll know it. You know, carry on going. And um, if you define the brand, it helps you go. Well, that logo works for what we want to say or what doesn't work for what. So you've done the thinking work before you do any executional work. Um, and it doesn't need to take months, weeks. It can take a day. It can take, and, and you might need to adapt it. You can't be 100%. Uh, you know, you might see, okay, we went in a bit narrow here. We need to widen a bit. But I've, I've found that's almost never the case. So I think... It's just taking time before you're spending money on any branding as such. That's execution. Uh, define the brand, and that'll definitely help with how you execute. You'll be able to more confidently say, you know, that advert, that's not us. It's not our brand. It's not the tone. It's not what we're trying to say. But you have something to benchmark and, uh, you know, assess it against versus just subjective opinion. I think a lot of business owners... You know, there's a flurry of emotions. It's dated as up and down. Today I like this, tomorrow I don't. And it's a bit of an anchor point for the business that I can refer to. And I've really seen it being that with tiny businesses and big businesses. It kind of sounds like to me that it's important to build a brand because whether you like it or not, and this is what you just said uh, earlier, is you, you're building a brand whether you like it or not. Exactly. So it almost feels like you are manning a ship and if you don't have your brand sort of laid out, uh, you know, or positioned, then it's an unmanned ship and then it can go either way. Every email you send, every interaction you have with a customer, you're building some sort of perception in their yeah. mind. And so why not be a bit intentional about that so that you, yeah. you know, you, you actually have a say as to what that perception is is yeah. to those yes. people and and why that's so important is it's something bigger than yourself a brand is something bigger than yourself that's the tribal sense that's the sense of belonging for anyone who enjoys joins the brand they feel they're working for a brand not just a, a person uh as such it's bigger than us so there's that aspirational there's, there's that vision aspect um and when i'm intentional about that i'm also binding my customers to this brand they talk about this brand. They love the brand, the service they get from this uh, company, uh, and they 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 are brand ambassadors. Um, if I'm giving them distorted, diluted, uh, you know, uh, all mixed match sort of messaging and how I feel, then you know I'm not giving them anything there. But that might be my brand as well. You might really understand that you're just this chaotic, you know, individual and your personal brand is chaotic and people want to do but And you decide that. And then you're cool with that. And then you're not going to take classes from someone who wants to refine you. You know, and then that's your thing. Um, so let's just give a quick example. Uh, in, in, you know, I think it might be useful. Let's, let's say you want to start a, um, you want to sell um, let's go like with a traditional store or shop and you're going to sell clothes. Okay. There's tons of clothes sales happening in the world. Um, and I think the, the, the bigger the global economy, the bigger the global marketplace, the more need there is or the more opportunity is for specialization. But you can't just be another. I think that, you know, a lot of people want to like, let's see what they're doing. Okay, they're pricing it there. They're selling this kind of thing. They must have figured out some stuff. So we're going to kind of, you know, follow, copy them. Then surely we'll sell some stuff. And then when that doesn't work, you're like, well, you know. Um, so I think you want to start a clothing shop. You sit down and you're all right. Um, 
why do I want to do that? I mean, there's a lot of the operational business aspects. Okay, cool. I've got a guy who makes great clothes at a decent price. Okay, cool. But if I have any say in the type of product or anything like that, um, what makes us different? What do we want people to perceive us as? Okay, who are we talking? Are you there? Sorry, I lost. Um, hey, I am there. Cool. Um, we can sell, still going, uh, we can sell all these things, right? That would mean we carry a, a very diverse inventory. That would put us at risk of a lot of non-sales, you know, across all of it. Um, so then the risk, okay, so how do we know what we focus on here? What are we going to sell? What range? Um, you know, like, okay, well, what, what really moves you? And I think for a young, you know, uh, you, you know, there's a passion element. So, you know, I absolutely love men's clothing, um, smart men's clothing. So we're going to, we gonna, okay. So we're speaking to men. Okay, cool. Um, and then, you know, what sort of style is there a style? Is there, is there, and you, you kind of define all these things and you go, okay, so in, what about the way we do it? You know, is it quick service or is it, um, is there added value? Is there, do we have a world saving green uh, policy uh, or another policy or whatever it is that differentiates us? Build all of that in, define it. And you'll come down to, you know, um, and, and, and be, be specific with words. You know, go on and go on. There's, there's tools online to even go like, what is an alternative word for quality or craftsmanship or and bold define you know unique memorable words that you can use and write down a sentence and go we are the um, time saving um, clothing company built on uh, Italian heritage ba 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 you know and really define that there and then you place that shop next to another clothing shop okay and suddenly it has a reason for being it's different it's i can only get that stuff there they only do that there i talk about that shop because they do it like this they have it like this the feel of it is like this exactly what you said about apple it's all intentional aluminium cases for you know aluminium uh, laptops and stuff, you know, I mean, you pull it out, it's all intentional. It's how do we set ourselves apart? And it started with the, the brand and it gets pulled through to every single execution. So suddenly you, you're then in your store, your store design. Well, we were going to just tell some guy to come and do some shop fitting. But if we're using traditional Italian, uh, you know, um, the, the element of, this feel of then we got to incorporate that. What is that? Then you go and look into that and you start building this very authentic, very real feeling thing that you start being um, amped about versus this transactional thing. Um, and there's an energy in the brand building. There's an energy in executing everything the brand is then sort of informing. So I think, you know, that's one example, but it, it applies to anything. Um, what, what will set me apart um, as opposed to being caught in the trap of sort of just transactional business and ending up being like everyone else, trying to sell everything else, everyone else is trying to sell um, and seeing. So when you talk about sales, by differentiating, by identifying, you know, your uniqueness, it's only going to impact your sales in a positive way. Um, and yes, there might be much more conscious effort. There might be uh, a bit of a lag time, but you will see when people start believing and become brand loyalists, it's incredible the value there. You win people for life, whatever you're selling versus, you know, it's, it's the age old thing of a, of a date versus a marriage. 
Uh, I can look for the sale, the quick bug, mm. sales tactics versus building an authentic brand people want to be loyal to. And uh, that, that, that makes I think, that tribal element uh, or aspect to us, of us, and uh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, man, and you know, you're talking about brands now, and you often think of, of these like super slick looking, uh, high quality, you know, all of those kind of word uh, brands. But I know that a, a coming back to that thing of a brand is a perception, and we're going to wrap soon, by the way. I'll, I'll need to look for the example I'm thinking of, but there's a, a car company, a used car company in the UK. I think it's called something like Jenny's Used Cars. And they actually adopt that brand of like a cheap car, flashy advertising. And they've made it their brand of like, you're going to come to us, you're going to get a deal. It's going to be exactly. fast. It's going to That's be dirty brand. and it's going to be good. And Rent they are wreck. very successful. Ring to wreck. Rent it doesn't wreck. always have to be like, yeah. And yes, so uh, a very, very good point. Very, very good point. So I think to wrap, what I would like to suggest maybe is that on one of these podcast episodes, I think we should actually talk about the Boom Studio brand because that is something that is a little bit unsaid at this point of time. And I think right now, because we haven't even like just written down a little statement of what the Boom stu Studio is, in Alistair's mind, there's a brand idea of what this thing is. In Travis's mind, there's a brand idea. And now we might even be no unknowingly, you know, sort of like pulling against each other um, from a brand perspective because there's no blueprint down, you know. So I don't know. I think that could be quite an interesting, uh, you know, podcast episode. Okay. It doesn't have we to can be too fancy. Yeah. Yeah, we can we we can unpack. Cool, but that was a great point about a brand is intentional and it can look uh, Ryan Air or any brand where you decide on who you're speaking to and you position everything. So we're not talking about being another Apple. Branding isn't just about the slick image; it's about positioning and authenticity. So you're going to make something look homemade, feel homemade, and those are often the, the most fun to work on is to recreate the very real feeling in something. Uh, that's a very good point, you know? So the freedom to decide this is what it is, this is how it is. And then focus on that brings a lot of energy. 